welcome to the Beyond Cinema studio, uh, Matthew Sapp. Um, firstly, congrats on having monthly Sundays here. Um, it's great for me, obviously, as an Aussie being over here, coming and watching a film and then seeing Anthony LaPaglia, someone who's like a well-respected Aussie actor, um, but on home soil, you know, uh, doing his Aussie accent again. Yeah. And it's also great seeing someone like John Clark, um, a comedian of note who the world should know more of um, in the film as well. Uh, talk to me a little bit about how this came together because I know Anthony is credited as an executive producer on the project as well. Yeah, yeah, he is, absolutely. Um, it's, it, look, it had a very long gestation period um, uh, and, you know, the way things work with films is everything goes incredibly slowly until they go incredibly quickly. And once um, we got the script to Anthony and then he signed on board, it started to go very, very quickly. And, um, um, you know, it's a low budget film, um, but he really put his, you know, weight behind it and to help us get it, you know off the ground and in front of the cameras and, um, um, you know, beyond uh, working simply as an actor, you know, in the, in the, in the role, he, he certainly took on, you know, a role as well in terms of helping us get it, yeah. get it financed. Yeah, I mean, I talk about the financing for a second because obviously in Australia it's a bit different, it's a government system as well, so you've got Screen yeah. Australia that you try and get on board, and then the South Australian Film Commission, I believe, got on uh, um, yeah, Film Commission came on board as well. But then the Adelaide Film Festival came on board? Yeah, well, they were the first agency in, to be honest. Um, uh, the project had been floating about in various incarnations and, and Screen Australia had been sort of in and out of, of, of those. And then it was in the sock drawer for a little while. Um, and then uh, Nick Batsius at Madman Entertainment and I were friends. and. Just funnily enough, we were just we were having our summer holiday in the same coast in a place called Robe, which sure. is like a little bit outside in South of Australia. yeah, in South Australia, and we, we just happened to be there at the same time. We were having a um, a barbecue, and we we're just sitting on a balcony, and and we'd worked together on on noise in the past and, and they distributed a, a, a short that I, I made called Roy Hospital Life. So I had a, you know, a history with, with, with Mad Man and we'd always wanted to work together again and apropos of nothing he said, have you, you know, what's around? And I said, well, I've got this thing that I can't, I can't get going. And he said, well, I'll show it to me. So um, it all started, yeah, with this, this crazy sort of conversation about about nothing and um, at the same time quite by happenstance I had a short film playing at, at um, the Adelaide Film Festival and Amanda Duthie is the, the, the festival director and she invited me as a guest to introduce you know this film it's just a short um, and I'm an Adelaide boy and Adelaide's very uh, you know, once you're from Adelaide, you're from Adelaide forever. Um, and she and Richard Harris at the SAFC, they, they had always been very keen for me to come back to Adelaide to, to make a film. And this, this, this film just seemed as though it could very easily be, be shot there. And, and, and so they were, the, they were the people that put the, um, you know, they were the first people to toss the coin into the hat, as it were. That's cool. It's kind of like, uh, it's almost like the movie. It's like people are going about their daily business and then all of a sudden a relationship changes. Yeah. And becomes yeah. amplified and then all of a sudden there's new players at the table and new relationships being formed and all these different kind of machinations that come into play. Well, there's nothing like happenstance, really, is there? Yeah. You know, as, you know and you, your life does, your life changes, um, so, you know, seismically and slowly at the same time. You know, it's like you... You're a different person when you're 30 and so when you're 50, but then there are days 
that are peppered along the way that completely change you in an instant. Yeah. yeah. In, uh, in the US, a lot of independent film directors come to television afterwards, and they're either, you know, like the guy who did the opening film at Toronto a few years ago, films a lot of Boardwalk Empire and the HBO yeah. shows. Yeah. Um, in Australia, it seems like it, it's almost like the other way around. Like, you can, you can, you can kind of craft a living out at, at, on television, and then every now and then you try and get a break in to try and uh, pursue a feature. Yeah, I think I think in Australia because the industry isn't big enough um, that it would be for all but a few people virtually impossible to maintain a career or a living if they were exclusively working, you know, as as a featured director. So um, thank God for television, you know, because you have a day job, and um, you know sometimes I think of. Uh, you know the occasions when I make a make a film is hobby farming, as it were. You know, like I feel like a, you know I'm a dentist that owns a you know a small vineyard uh, and they can work on the vineyard on the weekends. But you know the the day job is television. That's the um, which is I you know there's a, there's a lot of people who, you know make try to make the distinction between the two mediums. Um, I think. There is still a difference between the two mediums, but the gap's closing. Yeah. Um, but the great thing about television, um, for me, is it gives you know directors an opportunity to be you know constantly working and, 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 and con not constantly, but 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 getting a few runs on the board. Yeah. And Exercising those muscles. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, yeah. And, and and then when if you're lucky enough to to get the opportunity to work on a film, you can. There's a lot that you can bring from that television environment. It's very helpful. Yeah, and the comedy here is much more subtle than someone that has been associated with you in the past. People like Chris Lilly. Uh, oh, yeah. So uh, you know, like working with him, I saw Sean McAuliffe or McAuliffe. McAuliffe yeah. um, has a thank you in the film as well. Yeah. Um, so there's been a lot of kind of comedians around, circling around your world. How does that inform your brand of humour? How does that refine your brand of humour? I learn a lot from them, you know, and I've been, um, the past five years, I've been working with Josh Thomas a lot um, on a show called Please Like Me. Um, and we've just we've just we've just finished the the third series, and I I really love performers. I love actors. I really admire them, but particularly comedians. I have this deep, deep, deep admiration for and and um, you know you make this assumption that you know these these people that you know are funny on television are uh, uh, funny people, but what I in, almost invariably find is that in their day-to-day -day lives, it's not that they're not funny, they're incredibly funny, but they're, they're um, serious as well, very serious-minded, and, and understand comedy as an art form in and of itself, and, and, and know the rules and the mechanics of the rules, and and um, I've, I've, I felt really grateful to be able to work with people like, like Chris and Josh and Sean uh, who have been very generous and very kind in, in, in sort of showing me the mechanics of comedy and, and, and how it works and it's, it's actually a very serious business. Yeah, except when Leif Garrett is involved. <laughs> so, so in terms of that, in terms of that moment in the film, yes, yes. So growing, it was up, a cheap shot, you know. <laughs> but it was like it's like eighty minutes in the ninety minutes of the film. It's like I, I've earned it. I can do a cheap shot. It's so, fine. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, Leaf Garrett. I, feel, I do apologise to Leaf if you're watching. If, that, if he is sure the punchline for that moment, what if you growing up in Oz as an Adelaide boy? And with posters on your wall, who could we have expected to see in those posters? On my wall? Yeah. Oh, it would have been Han Solo, probably. Yeah. <laughs> and then... Um, <laughs> or Chewie. <laughs> and then uh, kind of a final question in terms of uh, the kind of overall message of the film. If you could steal those moments and have time or more time with anyone, uh, who do you wish you could have more time with? <sighs> my kids. 
you know. Um, I mean, it's great to be here at this festival, but I've got these, like, two kids and this wonderful wife that I'm not spending time with, and, you know, they're not going to get any younger. Um, that's a great question. There's a million people, you know. Um, that's a really good question. What about you? <laughs> don't talk to me. I'm just <laughs> the interviewer. Who, who yeah. would you spend more time with? I don't care. I, 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 yeah, I mean, I, I, on, on a personal level, yeah, my son, for sure. Yeah. Like, and do it, you know, take the red eyes and go on later flights and squeeze those edges to make sure I can. Um, uh, but what about in a fictional, what about in a fictional sense? Yeah, this is great. I love this guy. Yeah. It's like, you know, you, you know, it's, it's like the perfect dinner party. Like, I get, like, okay, you got a dinner party. Yeah. And you can invite five dead guests. Right. But what about, uh, so go, you go and I'll follow. So say in politics or sports. And we can do living or dead? Yeah. Or comedy. I know who I'd go for comedy, I'd go for Lenny Bruce. Um, I'd go for Bill Hicks. Oh, similar. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. Um, what about... Uh, yeah, this is cool, because you can kind of like, okay, the great dinner party, <laughs> and you get like a comedian <laughs> and a politician. Okay, a yeah, politician. And actor. I'd have to go with, I don't know, Nelson Mandela. I don't know, like I think that that would just be... Yeah, it would be pretty amazing. I'd, yeah. I'd Nixon. Nixon? Yeah. Cap just for the colour. Just, just a... You know, what were you thinking, man? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you did some, you know, um, entertainment. Entertainment, so, well, let's do actor and then do okay. musician. Okay, actor. You going first? Or? No, you go first on this one. On actor, living or dead? Yep. Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy Stewart, Jimmy Stewart. Oh. Um, I, if I was going dead, maybe I'd bring back Philip Seymour Hoffman for a bit. Yeah, yeah, um, too soon. Too soon. Need more. <laughs> um, and living. Um, at the moment, I think I'd, I think I'd, 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 I wouldn't mind sitting across the table from uh, from going guy probably uh, Tom Hardy. Yeah, yeah. Tom Hardy or Christian Bale, both super interesting. Yeah. Um, you. Ah. Uh, gosh, no. It's, the camera's rolling. I can't do it. <laughs> You might get him in the next film. <laughs> what about uh, uh, Clooney? Yeah. Clooney. All right. Clooney. Um, female? Dead? Uh, dead female? <laughs> um, uh, Hepburn. Hepburn? Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to pass up Hepburn. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's hard to pass up Hepburn. Musos. Uh, get a muso at this dinner yeah. party. Yeah. Uh, I would bring, uh, you know, I grew up in the 90s, so I've got to say I want to see more. Oh, like I, Kurt I, Cobain would have done yeah, it. Yeah, I knew you were going to do Kurt yeah. Cobain. I knew it. I had to. Yeah. Yeah. And you? Um, Mozart. Mozart's yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. recent history. Pick a party. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and he's got all these chocolates named after him now. He's got to bring a box of those to the party. Right. You're right. Very cool. That's right. All right. Um, and if you could shoot anywhere in the world, if any location was zero, was was up for grabs and uh, money was no object, where'd you go? On Earth? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Antarctica. Awesome. We'll get we'll hook you up with the film commissioner for Antarctica. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think they've got amazing tax breaks there. Yeah. You know, <laughs> some incentive. amazing rebates. Great incentives in winter. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, mate. Thanks for coming. It's been so a nice to talk to you, Elliot.